That is it. I've had it with you. You miss Ted so much, you go find Ted. Go on, get out of the car. I'm bigger and I'm faster. I will always beat you. Then I'm not gonna play with you anymore. Ever! I know what is best for you because I am your mother. What a pile of shit. Greetings, guest. Welcome to the patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking some of the most toxic mothers in film, featuring Mommy Dearest, Precious, Drop Dead Fred, and Anywhere But Here. Why can't you give me the respect that I'm entitled to? Because I am not one of your fans! Mom, the matriarch of every family, the center of every child's universe. She's a caretaker, a nurturer, the peacemaker, a magician, the one who always finds a way, the woman known for making something out of nothing, and she's so much more. But some children aren't so lucky. For some, they experience a relationship full of turmoil, competition, criticism, haste, suffocation, and regret. And in celebration of Mother's Day this year, we're taking a look at some of the most notorious moms in film and how their particular type of mothering led to, well, see for yourself. Don't, don't you oh, tell mommy, me what don't. I'm doing. Don't tell me. Don't. Oh, no. <laughs> mommy, I look awful. Yeah, I know you look awful. <laughs> you be quiet. You're always rummaging through my drawers, trying to find a way to make people look at you. Why are you always looking at yourself in the mirror? Why are you doing that? Tell me. You sit still. Now. We'll start out with an analysis of the infamous 1978 Mommy Dearest film, which is based on true life events told by Joan Crawford's adopted daughter, Christina Crawford. Then we'll take a look at fictional 90s comedy, Drop Dead Fred. And after that, we'll talk about Precious. And we'll end on a lighter note by looking at the mother-daughter relationship in Anywhere But Here, which is free to watch on YouTube if you haven't seen it already. So Mommy Dearest, the competitive mom. Mommy Dearest made its debut on the big screen in 1978 and was based off the novel Mommy Dearest written by Christina Crawford, who is the adopted daughter of Hollywood actress and star Joan Crawford. And the film was met with extreme criticism, mostly to do with the -the over-the-top acting and whether or not the accounts of this story were even true at all. Apparently, a lot of people in Hollywood, including one of Joan's biggest rivals, came to her defense after Joan's adopted daughter, Christina, dropped this autobiography. And this book was allegedly written after Joan excluded Christina and her little brother also adopted Christopher from her will, for reasons that Joan cited was well known to them. No wire hangers ever! So to summarize the movie, Hollywood star Joan Crawford couldn't have kids of her own, so she decided to adopt because she just has so much to give. And also that's good publicity for her, right? The movie portrays that Joan's lover slash lawyer slash friend actually pulled some strings to get her these kids because the adoption agency initially said that she was unfit. And if Christina's accounts of her childhood are true, we can all agree that she most definitely was unfit to be caring for children. Now, it's not lost on me that Joan was completely narcissistic and abusive, but I think most of the moms that I'm going to cover in this video are, so think of that as a given. I also thought it would be interesting to attempt to categorize the types of mothers in each film, 
So I labeled Joan Crawford as the competitive mom. Now, what's a competitive mom? According to Mom Tribe, which outlined an article on 15 types of moms, the competitive mom is a woman who happens to also be a mom, unfortunately, that simply cannot stop themselves from wanting to one up their children. They cannot be second best. They also tend to be pageant moms that push their kids into activities that they have absolutely no interest in. So in the film Mommy Dearest, it's so obvious that Joan is not only extremely abusive, but was competing with her daughter throughout her entire childhood and even into adulthood. Joan competes with her daughter in so many ways. There was the standoff over the bloody steak Christina didn't want to eat. When Christina was in grade school, there was the swimming incident where Joan knew that she could beat her six-year-old in a swimming race, but challenged her anyway and then rubbed it in her face after winning. (laughs) You lost again. Then traveling forward to when Christina is a grown adult trying to carve out a career for herself, Joan, who was like 50 or 60 years old at the time, takes her daughter's job as a 20-something-year-old character on a soap opera while Christina was sick in the hospital. And again, if the accounts are true, she even one-ups her daughter in death by leaving Christina completely out of her will, penniless. It's like Joan, like a lot of these moms we're discussing today, felt like she always needed to keep Christina in her place. In the film, you could just see how Joan was always trying to humble her. A parent is supposed to hype you up, not put you down. And it's just so weird how Joan has this great and lavish life and claims that she adopted her kids to share this life and her wealth with them. But she really just resents her daughter and wants her to try and make it on her own. It's so ridiculous. If you have a mom like this, I'm sorry. I don't know what advice to give other than to get therapy. And if you're in the thick of it, meaning you're still under her roof, disengage, don't compete, don't play into it, become a gray rock and hope that she finds you boring and lifeless enough to go and compete with someone else. Drop Dead Fred, the helicopter mom, and the mom who had a child to save a marriage. Drop Dead Fred is a quirky, dark comedy that came out in 1991 and follows the life of a girl named Elizabeth and her imaginary friend, Drop Dead Fred. So because this is the mom episode, we're going to try and refrain from talking about how awesome this movie is and try and focus on the relationship that Elizabeth has with her mom, Polly. So I'd classify Polly as your typical helicopter mom. And if you don't know what that is, helicopter parenting generally refers to those who have an over-involved and very overprotective parenting style. Now, how can a parent be too involved? Well, I'd say that if one's parents are still trying to pull the strings in their life as a fully functioning and grown adult, I think that can be classified as over-involvement. And this was the case with Elizabeth and Polly. Now, while Polly is strict with Elizabeth as a child, as an adult, she's completely overbearing, mostly in the realm of trying to dictate Elizabeth's romantic relationship with her husband. In the movie, Elizabeth is separated from her husband, who is clearly not right for her and is also cheating on her. And her mom plays a role, a big role, in trying to change her daughter and orchestrate a way for Elizabeth and her cheating and vapid husband, Charles, to get back together. Now, there is a scene in the movie where Polly basically tells Elizabeth that she only had her to save her own marriage. Anime? (laughs) Sometimes I wonder with you. I guess I made the same mistake a lot of people make. I had a child to save a marriage which didn't work out for her, by the way. How can you say that? Well, you made things worse. He left because of you. And perhaps she just doesn't want to see her daughter end up alone like her. But Elizabeth isn't alone. And you can't help but have some sympathy for this type of mom because even though she's kind of oppressive and kind of witchy, 
You can just tell that she wants the best for her daughter and she doesn't know that what's best for her daughter is figuring out her own marital situation sans the third party opinions. Precious, the abusive mom. Precious is a film that came out in 2009 and is based on the novel Push by Sapphire. So the story centers around a 16-year-old girl named Clarice, aka Precious, who's played by Gabrielle Sidibe, and she lives in Harlem with her horrid mother, Mary, and her equally horrid and absent dad, who thinks that he has free agency to continually S.A. his own daughter. She has two kids by him, and what makes this story even sadder is that Precious's mom blames her for the s- that she experiences at the hands of her own father. Anyways, we don't see much of him, so let's focus on the male-identified mom and how she treats her daughter like a literal scum-of-the-earth indentured servant. You get my cigarettes? Nah, they ain't have it. I played the number, though. I come in boxing. This is an example of someone who should have just given her kid up for adoption. She obviously doesn't want her and even tells her daughter that she should have aborted her, yet keeps her around for what one could only suspect for the purposes of having someone to punch down on and get a check off of. All abusers are like that though, right? They typically like having someone dependent and in close quarters that they can raise hell on. Her mom subjects her to rampant verbal abuse, physical abuse, all while being worried about nothing more than how to stay on welfare and why her 16-year-old daughter is screwing her man. You're a dummy, bitch. You will never know. Don't nobody want you. Don't nobody need you. You done around and fuck my motherfucking man. Mary is absolutely grotesque and evil. And this is a great example of a male-identified mom who puts her man above her daughter. Like, why is Precious at fault for your grotesque husband graping her? She didn't come on to him. She blames the actions of her ancient man on her daughter. And this is also an example of a woman with an immense amount of low self-esteem and how people like that will never find value in you because they don't value themselves. Precious does eventually escape the situation, and thank heavens that this is a fictional story, but there are mothers out there who show complete disdain for their daughters like this, who show jealousy and resentment towards their daughters like this, and who choose raggedy-ass males over their daughters like this. I pray that that's not true of anyone who's listening to this, but if it is, just know that you can escape your own reality. You don't have to live forever with the family that you're born into. You have the power to create your own and always know that you are enough. Anywhere but here, the hot mess mom. Ending on a lighter note with Anywhere But Here, this movie showcases a great example of the hot mess mom. She's not necessarily a notorious mom, but still fun to talk about. She flows with the wind, life is an adventure, she has no structure, and thus the kid suffers at the hands of her free spirit. If you haven't seen Anywhere But Here, this can be viewed on YouTube for free, and it's a wonderful story about a mom named Adele who picks up and leaves her good and safe Midwestern husband and their good and safe Midwestern town to move to LA with her teen daughter, Anne. Why? Simply because she's bored, she doesn't want her and her daughter to be quote-unquote ordinary and has no plan and skates by in life on a whim with her charms. That is beautiful. Um, It's by appointment only. It's all right. Do not disturb occupants. When they get to LA, they're staying in a crappy apartment. She forgets to pay the bills half the time. And she has these manic breakdowns and uses these instances to control her daughter. She tries to push her daughter into acting as well. I mean, Anne's mom means well, but she's a hot mess. 
Luckily, Anne, played by Natalie Portman, is very bright and has a lot of tact and intelligence to manage her mom and eventually escapes this wayward way of being when she gets accepted to a college on the East Coast. But that's exactly how these relationships with hot mess parents pan out. It's like the roles here are swished and unfortunately Anne misses out on her childhood and just being a teen because she's forced into the role of an adult and has to functionally manage aka parent her own mother. Anyways, that film is well worth watching if you haven't seen it. And there are so many other moms that we could cover, like there's the other mother in Coraline or Y. Olander or I, Tanya or Matilda. Drop some other titles down below and share your thoughts on this video. I always look forward to reading them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. Signing off now, happy Mother's Day, your friend, Dom.